So today we're going to take a look at MCR21's battery charging arrangement. And here is the battery charger. Well, in fact, it's three battery chargers because we have the ability to charge the sound battery 24 volts, the lighting battery 24 volts, and also a charger that can be switched to charge either the vehicle battery or the 18 volt sound battery that is fitted. And we have switches that will control basically whether they're switched on or off and how much current is supplied to the batteries by means of these um, rotary control switches. And we have a meter for each channel and some input and output fuses. Um, one item of note here is that um, at one point each of the mains fuses were doubled up such that there was a fuse for live and neutral which was common practice at the time but at some point in its life this uh, neutral fuse has been removed and that's why there's some, some blanking plugs here. Now overall this unit is in quite good mechanical condition but there have been some modifications made. Notably that the lighting battery current control has been modified to become a continuously variable control and there are some internal modifications that have enabled that to occur. But for the restoration project we wanted to return as possible um, as much as possible to the original specification of the charger um, and it turns out that the internal modifications were quite tricky um, to reverse so it just so happens that we have not one but two battery chargers and this one is actually more original we have both sets of fuses fitted albeit there is some damage to some of the fuse holders but we have the original controls that have not been modified there's also some damage to the binding posts for the batteries but that's really fairly minor to correct We want to take a look inside. Things are a little crusty. I'm just going to turn on some extra lighting to help see. Um, we've got quite a lot of rust and debris and general unpleasantness inside, but that's not really surprising after 60 years. And I think those would clean up reasonably well. Buried down inside, we can probably just about make out the fins of the selenium rectifiers that are inside. And luckily, we do have a source of spares. Um, these are actually the items that were removed for the modif from the modified unit. So here's an example of a selenium bridge rectifier. And we do also have the, some of the uh, fuse holders that can be um, salvaged to um, repair the broken parts. There's a couple of good ones there. Unfortunately, another one of them is, is damaged. Perhaps that was a um, common occurrence. I don't know. Um, there's also current limiting resistor here. Um, I should probably measure that in a minute and see how, uh, what the resistance is. And obviously there are, Brian was very careful to retain all the parts that he removed from the original unit uh, so it could be retrofitted but all in all we've decided that it would be better to concentrate on um, bringing the so-called spare unit back to, um, back to life possibly by swapping some 
exterior panels over because this panel here, the top panel, is off the original unit and it's in better condition than the slightly rusty one off the one we're going to restore. Similarly, the external panels on this one are a little bit crusty. Compared with this one, which Brian has actually lacquered. And that's protected it quite well. The alternative, of course, is to simply unbolt that panel and reverse it because the interior side of it is in good, good nick. These screws have probably never been out in 60 years and uh, some of them are pretty tight. Oh, that one was alright though. I'm pleased with that one. This one down here. Oh dear, that is really tight, that one. Um, I think I'm going to need to try a bit harder with some of these. I should have had an extra shredded wheat this morning, I think. I don't want to chew them, because uh, after all, they are original screws. Yeah, that one moved. Sometimes there's a technique of actually trying to do them up slightly to break the rust seal. That sometimes works. Either that or tapping them. And finally, probably putting some heat on uh, with the pencil gas torch might help. That started to chew that one, so I need to be a bit more careful. There'll always be one screw, of course, that is super tight. But we will get there. So as predicted, there's always one that is too tight to shift. All the others have, have uh, come undone, but this top one is proving um, impossible to shift. So I'm going to use a bit of brute force and ignorance. And just heat up the screw for a little while. I think that's enough. The idea is that the screw expands with the heat and then as it contracts again it will break the seal with the rust and then with a bit of luck I'll actually be able to shift it with the screwdriver. So we'll see if that's done the trick. Yes, that's done it. Amazing what I'll do. Right, now we can get the side off. Oh, hold that one. Please store the others. Peel the side off and take a look. And again, we've got a panel that's in much better condition on the inside, so I think we'll do that trick. A bit of insulating paper here because we've got the mains wiring. I guess they were a bit concerned for some reason. So we've got a big transformer per channel. Um, it's got multiple windings. The green wires are the mains input wiring. The other slight thing to note is that the supply to the transformer, the line and the neutral, come in at the bottom here. And these are the various voltage taps on the input, the primary side of the transformer. And I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but this one here 
is labelled 0, 200 volts, 220 and 240 and this one here is an offset one of 10 volts. So they've actually connected these transformers to work with a 250 volt nominal supply uh, which I find a little bit interesting. Perhaps it's just so that uh, the unit is always underrun under most conditions. So no matter what voltage they have on site or through the uh, automatic voltage regulators, this unit is always going to be run on the safe side. But uh, we can see that there's an odd one out here. The, these cables here to the middle transformer in this case are not like the others. And I think that's an indication that that transformer has been changed at some time in the past. Certainly on the other unit, all three transformers are uh, in this green sleeved cable. Right, here we can see the mains input cable, which I thought was going to be original. Um, it's in this sort of um, <laughs> good old fashioned ironing type heat resistant cable. But if we look closely at the colours, we can see that it's in the modern brown and blue configuration. So this actually is non-original cable. So somebody's been here. Um, since this was made and replaced the cable. And there's a shot of the rear of the unit. We can see these massive bolts which are holding the transformers onto brackets. And then there's a lower row of slightly smaller bolts and those are holding the power resistors in place. Before I even think about switching this unit on, um, I'm going to do a quite a lot of cleaning I think. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to anticipate this working or going up in flames, frankly, because the selenium rectifiers are known for um, letting out the magic smoke in quite spectacular ways. So I think I'd rather deal with um, a broken unit in a clean state than uh, trying to fault find something that's uh, uh, pretty horrible and then cleaning it up. Uh, so with that in mind, um, this restoration I think is going to be more mechanical than electrical. Um, but it's got to start somewhere and I think first of all we're trying to remove some of the uh, the really foul debris. I found a leaf in here actually which which I think is a, a beech leaf so I wonder how old that is. Could be could be pretty pretty old. Um, I don't think we'll keep that though. Uh, so I've got the stiff, stiff paint brush. I think this is the basic tool for cleaning stuff up. I can be fairly aggressive without doing any damage and then we'll go in uh, into more intricate cleaning I think but once we've got the worst of it off. So this is really surface rust and dirt that's coming off with the paintbrush quite readily actually. just a few minutes with the stiff paintbrush um, we can actually start to see the laminations appearing now out of the uh, out of the rusty mess and this is one here I haven't started on yet and I think you'll probably just about see the initial state it's really really flaky um, and crumbly debris on there it's not surprising really because these are iron cores uh, for the transformers um, and they're, they're basically going to rust in, in damp conditions aren't they um, I think as part of this restoration, we're actually going to take these transformers off the mounting bracket so that the brackets themselves can be um, cleaned up and repainted. It looks like they were black to start with. Um, and it would also enable us to, to get in and really clean this up. I'm inclined to test it first though. Uh, the reason being that any disturbance of these um, transformers and the wiring around them could introduce more faults, so I'd like to see what we're dealing with um, from, from sort of day one before we introduce any more faults. Um, but I do want to get this a, a lot cleaner before I start getting my hands inside it. Um, so we'll, we'll carry on with the cleaning process. <laughs> 